Okay, so we'll see. Let's talk about water cooling. If video, I feel video too long, I might cut it here. So if video ends, watch next one. Otherwise, we'll keep going. All right, water cooling. That's the only part I was really enjoying. This was one of my favorite builds. A lot of things went exactly as I wanted from the first attempt from my head and um, I can't say it's my like favorite build because of a few other builds that I dearly love but this build went as good as it gets. First of all, few modding moments related to water cooling. I feel that it could be really cool to have a custom backplate and uh, some sort of design on GPU. So I reached uh, my custom and friend, Snap Computer Design, and asked him if he will be nice enough to make me some custom graphics on a GPU. And he basically did it for me. I'd like to thank him for this because uh, certain things that I'm not capable to do in the shop because I don't have a tool and I don't have patience and knowledge to do things. So. Uh, I will show you that we have here white backplate on a 1080 Ti with the graphics that customer selected. She likes foxes and uh, you know things like this and I, maybe she play even as a fox in some games, I don't know. So we selected cool picture, we printed it out, applied it and also Snap come up with a really cool idea. He made me or her additional badge right there. There is also, as you can see when computer is covered, so we have a window that shows all motherboard there, but there's another window that shows the thing. And as you can see, I have uh, two LED strips attached to the panel, so when everything light up, I have whole thing like highlighted and glow, which looks really cool. So this was really nice touch. Otherwise, this window kind of strange. You have this little black badge. And after that, a kind of big white section, which looked odd. I don't know why they did it, what was the idea, or maybe the idea was just when you remove the panel, then it looks okay, but when panel is still in place, then it looks strange. So now it looks really balanced, and I think anybody who woke up in a room and see how the whole bloody thing is glows, because in a, in a dark environment, this build looks like freaking sick. I am pretty sure it will be a lot of compliments going on about this computer when it goes to its final destination. So in terms of visual balance, it went as good as it could be, at least in my head. All right? So back to water cooling section. I'm trying to rush. I hope you don't mind, but it's my last evening when I can do this video. So whatever it goes, you will see it. No rehearsing or reshooting. Top. I use a 420 radiator from Alpha Cool, already painted white. Relatively good match to the color of the case, a little bit more yellow comparing with um, the case itself, but very, very decent. All fitting everywhere. Beats power, silver shining. Looks really cool, they reflect uh, lights from LEDs, and the whole thing looks very, very neat. It almost looks like a pieces of mirror inside of this case because everything's so white and so light up so it's a sparkling and kind of really cool looking I hope you will see it on the video secondly in terms of the tubing the client on, and tubing and liquid client want white pastel I hate pastel I never use it my computer just don't like milkshake my computer but she wants white fine so we went it. I think it was a good choice, the reservoir and everything looks totally awesome. But I decided instead of traditional transparent tubing, I decided to use Beats Power white glossy tubing. And it's acrylic of course, I, I don't use PETG no, no more for my personal computers, not for my clients. PETG is big no for me, end of story. If you want to use it, be my guest, I have it in my store. So. Why I selected a shiny white? I think the, I don't like look the thing like, when you put white liquid in a transparent tube, it's basically like milkshake in a, in a glass. So you have this transparent body and something inside. This way the whole thing is look a little bit fatty, so 12 millimeter tubing looks a little bit bigger. And also the shiny surface of the tube reflect lights, which makes it even cooler. So we can see the lines and the different lights bouncing from the different, depends on like where your head is. So the whole, this polished shiny looks of the tube works so well here. So I'm really excited about how the result ended up. 
last thing, not last thing, next thing. You know, I am absolutely lost when people do all this unnecessary spinning and put tons of tube because, first of all, it looks like shit in my opinion, but doesn't matter. If somebody likes it, it's not my build. Secondly, the longer you tube run, the more performance you lose. And at the end of the story, there's a dragon of water, so you want short runs and uh, they should be look good and, and visually pleasing. On top of everything, I have my own like OCD things. I actually like to hide you. So you can see in all, many of my builds, it almost doesn't look like with a cool build because you have so little tube exposed. So there's no difference here. I build it for my clients. I was given permission to do the way I do. So that's how I did. First of all, let's look on a tube round. We have a reservoir and I made a loop through the GPU, CPU, radiator and back to reservoir. So how I did it? First of all, there is a kind of grommet on the bottom section that used for the cable for PSU. I just put tubes through in and exit from the reservoir totally hidden. And I went up behind a reservoir section and so you don't see the tube going straight behind the reservoir. And then 90 degree bend right under GPU so it's almost invisible. If you look from the bottom or you like go a little bit down you will see the tube because it's parallel to GPU but it goes very close to motherboard in 90 degree turn and come back on the bottom of GPU. So it's very very dis discreet, not visible. If somebody wants to use any of the um, slots unless it's abstracted by this fitting nothing prevents you to use uh, other component of motherboards because sometimes people are stupid like going down a uh, thing and they basically block the rest of the motherboard which is not smart in my opinion now up up you saw it 100 times in, in my build that's how i like it some people like to bend it like this way i always like bend this way so i'm going straight towards motherboard on 90 degree and up towards cpu of course, this port and this port, is they're not perfectly aligned, they're a little bit like shifted, but because of the how way I do it, it looks like it's almost like on front of each other and uh, it looks very, very vertical, I would say. That's how, how I, I try to achieve it. Now, here, what I want to do, I wanted actually to run the tube behind the radiator and go back to the reservoir. So you can see, you can't see Actually, you cannot see how tube goes behind the reservoir, so the tube is 100% hidden. I use this port that is goes actually closer to us because it was easier for me to exit CPU block and go to this port than this port. So this whole section is still open. So if we have a tube here, so this is already like sticking out and it doesn't look good. So this is very close to motherboard again. Had to use a few fittings here, unfortunately, because it's, it was such an awkward alignment of the port that, and I didn't want to like make any like too complicated bends because it's hard to eyeball it. Some people, it's just freaking geniuses. I don't know. I'm sometimes I I spoke to Daniel from Singularity, and he said, oh, "Okay, it's no problem. You just bend it. I see where the ports are bended by hand. No problem." Like. Yeah, great. <laughs> I cannot do it. So for me, it's easier to align it with a bunch of fittings. So I had 90 degrees, little spacer, and another 90 degrees straight up. And then there's a combination of 290 that I was able to swivel. So it gives me right alignment. So that you went 100% vertical. Another good thing about actually the case, it has a holes for radiator which I elongated. So this allows me to play with the radiator in this direction and put the tube the exactly position when I want it. So I wanted it just before this uh, cover for IO port starting coming, coming out because it's, it's kind of sloped as well. So it's in the middle of the slope and it's almost the same level as the end of it. So it's, it looks really, really balanced, so, which is satisfy me in this way. So, and uh, the last thing, the last secret here is uh, how I actually mounted the reservoir and how I return liquid out as well as I provided filling port. So, tube goes behind the reservoir and it goes under this panel. The white panel that you have right there. I had to drill two holes in it 
and so I coming from the behind the panel back to return to liquid. There's a, another thing that works really well for me because basically two ports are using one is a return of the liquid and second is a filling tube. The reservoir sits on those two tubes and is hanging on it. So it works as a bracket. So I don't need a bracket on top. So I still have a bracket on the bottom. Again from singularity you see it. So it holds and doesn't allow reservoir to shift anywhere close to the pump area. But the top of the reservoir 100% fixed with those two tubes. Actually it was fixed so well because tubes are literally like less than one inch long. So it's very rigid construction. I don't really need it that much this bottom bracket. But just for the sake of solid as a tank type of design. I put it here so this reservoir doesn't go anywhere. It's like really really rigidly fixed. Right? And that was it. So it, it took me one day to visualize how I do it. It took me second day to bend few tubes because some 90s didn't went well. So I let the play with the bending tubes. And the third day I just assemble it. And drilling holes was a little bit pain too, because drilling through aluminum case, like case labs, it's like done, right? And when you go bend, uh, try to go through metal panel, it's not easy to drill with. It's tried to be stuck and things get bended. So it was a little bit frustration. And I didn't have a vice, so I had everything put in my hand. So it was a little bit muscle work here. But in the end, everything went well. All right. So that you can see that water cooling portion was a few tricks and a few styles. I would say it's not even tricks, more like style of way to hiding. But in the end, it went so so well. And I decided not to use PWM because uh, I can't even explain. I think it's so much easier to use controller and uh, it's fast you can change it every any, any moment you want to you don't need any freaking software for that and uh, also you can play by ear so much nicer i found this faster and more satisfying way because you can see i'm running almost half speed but if i go 100 percent you can hear that there's actually 1500 rpm eight fans there's a noise before you hear nothing all right so what i use i slow them down to about i don't remember i just would like to do voltage back and uh, tell you what it was i use like six volt essentially under volting it uh, about 900 960 900 rpm you can hear nothing it's absolutely quiet Pump is dead silent, fans very low hum, and when we put the panel, it will be even, even quieter, right? So that's what it. I, I, I really apologize, and I'm not happy that I wasn't able to show you progress because it was quite interesting experience and easy ride. So it's a pleasure to talk about it, but it didn't happen. But I hope at least you like the summary and appreciate the summary. I will now shoot a bunch of shots so I can complement whatever I was speaking for all this 20 minutes or whatever it was. And uh, yeah, this will be end of it. So hopefully she will like it. I show you some pictures, but I didn't show you everything. I didn't show graphics yet and the whole bloody thing. So <clears throat> yeah, hope. <laughs> I'll tell you about it in the comments. Alrighty guys, thank you very much. Love you all. See you soon.